Hello, and welcome to the Mentor Dino YouTube channel. I'm your host, Caitlin Rosier. I am an architect and founder of Mentor Dino. Each week, I interview amazing professionals in and around the architecture, engineering, and construction industry to help foster learning, growth, and inspiration in others. Thank you all to our current subscribers, and if you're new, we'd love to have you join our community. So hit subscribe, it really does help others be able to discover this resource. So let's dive in. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Welcome everyone to the Mentor Dino YouTube channel. I would like to welcome Katerina Barinova, owner of her own architecture practice, Katerina Barinova Architecture, and podcast host of From the Honeycomb, which I don't know if you guys have seen me on there or listened to her channel yet, but definitely check it out. And I just want to thank you, Katerina, for taking the time to speak with me today. Oh, thank you for having me on. I'm super excited to share more about myself as well as about Foster Shastra. Um, so about me, I'm a licensed architect living in Southern California. And architecture for me started, the interest for it, or like I like to say the seed was planted about when I was about 10, 11 years old. And you know, in school, there was a group of people who came in to talk about, I lived in a brand new development. Um, there's a lot of like brand new development in like Orange County, Southern California, a lot growing up, popping up. And I was one of the living in one of those new developments. And the team of architects and planners came to our school and they talked about it. And there was one woman in the team. And that kind of like sparked the curiosity for me. And then moving on, you know, sitting in English class and we were reading some poem about a guy like maybe it was a Jack Frost poem about a guy who was living in his cabin and I was so bored by the poem I decided to draw what now I know is like a section view of the little cabin of the man sitting and of his like furniture and fireplace and like shelves and everything and from then that moment I was like this is so fun I love like designing a home so I started getting graph sheets of paper and designing like my dream home and of course it had like a bowling alley a swimming pool like huge bedrooms like of course like every you know child's dream and from then, I knew I wanted to be an architect. And I pursued that dream going to Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. Um, was there for five years, five-year program. And once I graduated from Illinois Tech, I stayed in Chicago for two more years working at a high-end residential firm. And I mostly focused, most of my internships were around residential, high-end residential. I came back one summer here to Orange County and worked in Newport. And I just really enjoyed working on like the luxurious residential homes. Well, after two years for, after graduating in Chicago, um, the winters got too cold for me. <laughs> I just said, I'm done. This is it. I'm going to go back home, back to California. So I moved back home and I ended up getting a job at a firm here in South Orange County in Laguna Beach. And I most recently transitioned from the, that firm actually earlier this year because so I had finished my ARE exams last fall, about a year ago to this date, and I knew I've always wanted to have my own firm. So last fall, finished my exams, throughout the winter started thinking, okay, how am I gonna start my own firm? I incorporated to Katerina Brand of Architecture Inc. in February of this year and was already having conversations with my boss at my previous firm, you know, saying, I'd like to have my own firm, you know, how are we gonna do transition me out of um, my current job? Well, the plan kind of was for me to transition in the fall, but it was a little bit of a surprise and I actually kind of got let go in a way in May. So the transition happened faster. Um, I had wrapped up some of my projects, you know, my boss is in his early 80s, so he's, you know, wrapping up shops. So it kind of made sense in a transition way now looking back on it. Um, but that transition from working at a firm to working for myself has been a learning curve, but it has been so rewarding within of itself. And so now I work for myself and I've got about five projects that I'm working on right now. Some are in construction, some are in schematic design, design development phase. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I am present day. And then should I cover Vastu now or later? I have one little question before we jump into Vastu. Um, so how was that transition for you since you kind of 
had the plan, you at least already incorporated, which I know mm -hmm. in California, I'm sure there's other states where if you're practicing architecture, you're more either a sole proprietor or a corporation. Mm -hmm. In the state of Pennsylvania, you can be a PLLC if you want mm -hmm. to practice architecture and not be a sole proprietor. Um, so do I have that right for anybody looking in California to starting their own firm? Yes, you can have an LLC in California. You can be a sole proprietor. I'm an S corp. You can be a C corp for tax mm -hmm. purposes. I'm an S corp. So the way my, like the easy, the easiest structure to explain it is I get paid as an employer and employee. So that's kind of how that S corp structure works. Yeah. I know over here and uh, Pennsylvania, at least you can, you can't be an LLC and be an architect. Um, you'd have to be a professional LLC and it takes, um, mm -hmm. different amount of, um, taxes isn't the right word I want, um, but different other fees associated with it. So I know my mentor Dino is an LLC cause I do not practice architecture under that name, but I learned a lot when starting my own mini mm -hmm. company, you learn a lot when you go through the process on pulling that together. Um, would you recommend others looking to start their own firm to have that overlap, even though your overlap was probably cut shorter than you expected? I think so in a way, especially the way that overlapped my transition. I'm really happy I had so much set up ahead of time. I was incorporated. I had a business bank account. I knew who my accountant would be. I had my website was up and running. I had business cards. I had a design, a logo, all of that. I think you can absolutely, if someone listening is looking to, you know, transition to having their own firm, absolutely setting up because there's so much that goes, you know, behind the scenes of a business that nobody sees on social media, not on, you know, you don't see in the day unless you're in it day to day. And so absolutely, if you're working at a firm right now, start, you know, looking at putting together a website. The one thing that I wish I had started on earlier as well is working on portfolio pieces. That's my own work, my own design, regardless of if I had a client maybe a year ago, I should have been putting together, you know, little projects that um, I designed because one of the things that kind of the roadblocks I was hitting right away when I was on my own is, I'm at a client meeting and I'm killing it. I'm you know, selling it. I'm like, you know, it's going to be a great project. And then the question comes up, well, do you have any portfolio pieces you can show us? So what is your like design work and all that? Well, most of my portfolio pieces of my own design work is back from university. And so I don't want to, you know, and I didn't do residential projects um, throughout college. So I wish I had started earlier on by putting together a portfolio of my own work that shows my style, shows what I'm able to do. And that's something I'm kind of catching up on now, but I could have absolutely done that while working for someone else. Um, yeah. One of the big things that I made sure to keep is being open and honest with my boss because you don't want to burn any bridges as you're transitioning. So I let him know that I was thinking about it. I was incorporating. Um, so that's also a big thing because you don't want to like doing things behind your boss's back. Yeah, and at least letting them know. I know even Mentor Dino, I let my firm know ahead of time just mm -hmm. so everybody knows and you can yeah. understand where they want to be. Um, so, bef and we are going to spend a lot of this episode actually teaching you guys a little bit about Vastu, which is um, a service line that Katerina provides that I'm going to be learning a little bit about. I purposely did not learn anything ahead of time minus your small instagram clips is probably the extent of what i've seen but before we jump into that um i want to jump into kind of your mix of your profession and home life a little bit um i know your husband is a super is he still a super or is he, is, he more gc he, now he's more of a gc now and he actually also has his own gc company that he incorporated last year so we both so yeah. So how does, well, I guess that's two questions. How does having two small businesses under one household um, balance out? Cause that is stressful things. There's um, I know a lot of us has talked about owning our own company. The highs are really high and the lows can be really low, but you've also kind of married into the dark side as other architects would joke about. Um, and so how's, how's being married to a contractor helped 
influence your design decisions and how you put together a set in a building? That's a great question because I get to see, although I get to, you know, I am married to a GC and, you know, we kind of joke about it sometimes, especially when I visit him at a job site and I take charge, I just automatically, that's not architect, even though it's his job, his project. Um, it's been really helpful both for, for myself, because one of the things I've really not, where I lack experience is construction details. It's just something I've never, the firms I've worked at, it's just hard to get as much experience in construction details because sometimes when you're in that construction document phase, it's like, go, 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 get the drawings out. And so there's sometimes I, you know, I'm designing something or, you know, my first project was a deck, deck repair and I need to do a handrail. And I'm sitting there looking at hand, the handrail drawing of like what I'd like it to look like, but when it comes down to detailing, I had no idea where to start. So with the design intent, I talked to my husband. I said, how would you build this? How would you detail this? And then once then once he would help me, I would then do the drawing and I would show it to him. And I'm like, does this make sense? Is this clear? And one of the big things I want to do is make my drawings as builder friendly as, as possible. There's the design phase, you know, where you're drawing and you're doing cool renderings for the clients and, you know, putting them on social media. And that's great. But at the end of the day, the contractor is your end user. And if the plans don't make sense, then there's going to be lots of questions, you know, lots of issues that may come up during construction. So with him, I really make sure to check in with him. Hey, do my drawings make sense? Is this buildable? You know, and I've also seen him bidding projects. I've helped him bid a project where he's like, hey, can you review these plans for me? And I looked at plans from other architects and gone, wow, there's really no information. How do you even build off of this? So we've kind of have this great relationship professionally. And that's actually how we met is through work um, as well. So we've worked on projects in the past together, but is we both now understand what the other side has to do. So now he, like, for example, the ARE exam, that was eye-opening. <laughs> an eye-opening experience for him to go through with me and he's like wow I can't believe the architect has to know so much I look at architects differently so there's definitely we've been getting a lot of just insight for what the other profession has to deal with that I think we should have more respect for each other as well professionally yeah definitely I know when I'm trying to teach detailing to young professionals that are right out of school because it can be hard to teach them in 2d I always mm -hmm. try to give them an axon and say, okay, imagine you can only put this together with like a big hand drill. Can you physically mm -hmm. fit the drill in? Cause I've had ones I'm like, well, how are you going to clean that? Can't even get back there to clean or how are you going to physically, mm -hmm. here's your bolt, but how do you, what tool do you need to put in the bolt? And then do you have enough room for the toll to actually do the job? And that can be really hard for people to understand or even know what tool people need to use. Uh, to do it. I know I'm always bugging people. I'm like, all right, how would you put that together? And then Googling how construction works. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, you don't think about it too. I think that's a great example of sometimes we get lost in the 2D and we mm -hmm. don't realize it eventually it's going to have to be built in 3D. And so it's, it's a good practice to even think about it in 3D. And then, you know, of course I get to go to his job sites and, and see more projects. So it's, it's been really good. And the question we get asked often is, well, would you guys work together? Like, would you ever do a, like a design build firm? Yeah. And we've, we've talked about it and it's something we're definitely, you know, if, if it's the right client, the right project, um, cause we're pretty good about compartmentalizing work and home life for, for the most part. But, um, there's, I could definitely see that becoming a little bit more stressful with more stakes, you know, more stakes there. Yeah, definitely. So, I want to jump right into Vastu because I'm not sure okay. how long this is going to take. Um, so if for anybody who has no idea what we're talking about, mm -hmm. can you give them kind of the overall summary, high level of what Vastu is, um, how you discovered it, and why you have it as a service line? Absolutely. So I'll start with how I discovered it, and then that'll kind of bring into the history of Vastu. So I was actually, it was about 2017, I was in the beginning stages of my ARE journey and I was failing exam after exam after exam. 
and I got really discouraged and just really frustrated and I was on social media and there's a girl named Sahara Rose um, who teaches Ayurveda, which is a Indian Vedic science that has to do with like health and like nutrition. And I've been following her for a while and she had this talk going on in LA and it was, so I, I was feeling discouraged. I'm like, you know, I'm going to, I need to get out of town, even though I live in Orange County, LA seems like another world. I was like, I just want to go to this talk and just see, maybe I can get inspired because I was really feeling like maybe architecture isn't for me. I keep failing, I keep failing. So maybe I can get it inspired. So I went to her talk and there she was talking about finding your dharma, which is your soul's purpose in life. And she had us write down two things on a piece of paper that really are, feel like our purpose, why we're here, things we love to do, things we're passionate about. So I wrote down architecture and Bastu. Uh, no, I'm sorry, architecture and yoga. <laughs> I put architecture and yoga down and I looked at my, my piece of paper and I'm like, how am I going to combine these two? Am I going to be designing yoga studios? Like, I don't want to design just yoga studios. And how many yoga studios can you design in the world? So I kind of just let that thought marinate of like, okay, architecture, you know, yoga, how can those two come together? And just through kind of being open and just finding things online, I started to kind of stumble upon Vastu Shastra. And so Vastu Shastra is a Vedic science similar to it. So Ayurveda has to do with your nutrition, your mind, kind of your body. Yoga is also a Vedic science that has to do with like your movement of your body. And then there's Vastu Shastra, which is the Vedic science of structures. And so dating back thousands of years when India, you know, when construction was happening, they were building homes, building temples, um, building palaces. There wasn't, you know, a real definition of architecture. You know, I think the Western civilization brought in what is architecture. And so they were designing based off of Vastu, off of energy. And so there's different Vastu, you know, principles that you can learn depending on where you are in India. And of course, it's drastically changed, you know, especially with the modernization of, you know, one example I like to give is, you know, homes have modernized so much. So when you're looking at Vastu, you're looking at a floor plan, and you're looking at the energies of where the spaces are located. You know, when you think about the toilet, like we used to have outhouses outside of the home. And then when the toilet was introduced into the home, all of a sudden, a lot of these Vastu principles had to change, had to shift, because now you are inter introducing like a new element into the, into the space. And so what Vastu looks at is the, the structure of a, of a home, of a commercial building, of a space, we, of our kind of built environment. We can, you know, zoom out as far as looking at it as cities, as countries, but I specifically focus on Vastu in residential. And then looking at a floor plan, you can look at it through first the cardinal direction, so north, south, east, west. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the Vastu I have been studying actually has 16 directions. So there's north, north, northeast, northeast, east, southeast, east, south, and I'll, we'll, I'll show you the Vastu yeah. Chakra shortly in a floor plan. I won't go through all the 16 directions. Sounds um, like when I give directions in Pittsburgh, you got to go to the right-ish turn because we've got so many like five intersections. It's straight-ish. <laughs> go this way. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so there's 16 directions. Previously, I had been studying more of a traditional Vastu that had four directions, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. And I've been diving deeper and deeper now, finding these 16 directions. And each of these directions has to do with something. So, for example, the northeast area of the home has to do with mind and clarity. And you have the, you know, northwest zone has to do with banking support. And the east-southeast has to do with anxiety. And so all of these zones are based on those directions. You can also look at Vastu at a, at a floor plan and see these different areas and these zones and look at it. They're distributed kind of by planets, um, by the deities, gods and goddesses. Each god and goddess kind of has their different zone. Um, the planets and deities is something I don't really specialize in. I don't have too much knowledge in. I more look at the practical Vastu principles. And I also do like to incorporate the element theory. So um, the five elements, the four element, no, five elements, um, and where they kind of fall into that Vastu chakra. Nice. And I know you just added the service line too. Yes, I did. 
So I felt confident enough to be offering Bostu services, and I actually have a project that I'm designing from the ground up. Um, it's actually in Canada using Bostu Shopster principles. But I also not only can I design your home using the Bostu principles, I can also do consultations and look at your existing space. Because what we want to look at with Bostu is you know, once we start changing, you know, we don't have to remove walls, for example, we can start, you know, locating furniture differently, we can start putting openings in different locations, there's, you know, adding colors, there's different things we can add to the home to shift the energies to help with, let's say you're having financial issues, well, we can look at these certain zones and areas of your home and see how, why is it unbalanced, why is, you know, why are there, you know, issues, and then find remedies to fix this fix whatever it is that's going on but it's not going to be like a you know here we go we're going to move this wall and all of your financial issues are going to go away it doesn't work like that <laughs> but but hey if it would work that way i would knock down some walls <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. so there's definitely a lot of um when approaching boss to you know looking at it from from different ways and it's, it's energies energies aren't, aren't tangible right um, so it's, and of course it depends on the energy of the occupants of the home and like if their astrological signs come into play, which that's, um, just, there's lots of layers, but I like to look at boss do, you know, look at the floor plans and then seeing it as a way to help aid with something. So maybe you're having relationship issues or you're, you know, I mentioned financial issues, looking at how can we position things in your home to make sure that you benefit the most from these energies. And, you know, if there is you know, a challenging time comes up ahead, because it's not going to change your destiny either. <clears throat> it's not going to, sorry, give me some water. <clears throat> <laughs> no, good. Hmm. It's not going to change your destiny at all. It's going to help aid when there's those challenging times. Yeah. And it's nice that you don't have to like blow everything out in the home. There's things at different levels of budgets, depending on if you want to take mm -hmm. steps towards having a little bit better energy or changing what's mm -hmm. going on in your home. I know the number of times my mom has moved around furniture in our house growing up and it ends up in the exact same spot she started with. Um, but when you walk through this with a client, I know mm -hmm. on the commercial architecture side, we a lot of the times have to educate the users Mm -hmm. on the process and decisions being made and why mm -hmm. and explaining the codes. Mm -hmm. Do you walk your clients through that process as well to like give reasonings behind the positives of moving things in a different direction from an energy standpoint? It depends. I've noticed. So before I started my consultation services, I've been guinea pigging off of a lot of friends asking for floor plans to see how they've, they've been doing it. And it, it depends on the client. Like I like to look at the floor plan first, kind of do an analysis and then talk to them about, okay, you know, here's some things, here's what I'm noticing come up. Also, I'd like the client to let me know, hey, you know, there's something like I just moved into this house. That was um, one friend of mine. She had just moved into a house recently and she said something feels really off. And she's like, I know you're studying Bostu. Can you take a look at it? And immediately I noticed that where she works, where she sits, because she works from home, where she sleeps, and one of the entrances into her home bring a lot of depression and anxiety and like anxious energy into her home. And so I told her, I said, I've been noticing because of where you're located, you know, sleeping, where you're working, and, and this, um, have you noticed that you've been really like anxious and like kind of depressed since you moved in? And she's like, you hit the nail on the head. She's like, I can't like shake this weird feeling ever since we moved in. And so there's definitely... I like to look at the floor plan and then kind of see what we can, you know, look at. But if there's something specifically, like you'd want to come to me and be like, hey, Katarina, I'd really like to, you know, propel my, you know, career forward. How can we do things in the home? You know, um, there, I can't fix everything and it definitely takes time. It's not a, you know, we're going to, you know, move something and then the next day you're going to feel results. It does take some time to let the energy flow. And then we also don't want to touch anything, even if it may look imbalanced on the floor plan. If you're not noticing any issues, we'll just leave that area. You don't want to disturb the energies because sometimes energies balance themselves as well, right? Yeah, definitely. 
So I think we can jump in. So we're going to have a fun cool. exercise. So I gave Katerina my house. And so we're going to take a look at my house from a Vastu perspective. And I'm very interested because I know I've been staring at all different things in my house as an architect. Like, oh, what if I did an addition here and move this door? So I'm very curious what you came up with and what you're seeing from a Vastu perspective and see if there's anything I can clean up or rearrange to change up some energies a bit going into the gloomy winter season. We are recording this in November. So we're definitely going into doom and gloom. And in Pittsburgh, it's pretty much gray clouds from here on out until summer. So I know I always need that little energy boost in the winter months. So well, let's take a look. Yeah. So here is your first level four plan with the Vastu Chakra on top of it. So I kind of want to talk about the Vastu Chakra now that we visually have it as well. So as you can see, there's the different directions. You've got north, northeast, north, northeast, east, northeast. And all of these are zones. So it's kind of just think of it as like a pie slice, right? This is the east, northeast zone. And then east, northeast zone has to do with fun and recreation, for example. So that's something you can look at. So when we look at like the east zone, so this part of your house, would be part of the east zone which has to do with like social association which we can talk about um so that's kind of how those different zones are are laid out and then you will see that there are 32 zones that have to do with entrances and this has to do with all exterior entrances so anything you walk through so a door a sliding door um, a pivot door and it doesn't matter what kind of door if, as long as it's an entry door or an exterior door into the space. In, in the Vastu I study, we don't look at interior door locations. It doesn't matter which way they swing. And it also doesn't matter which way they swing on the exterior. It does matter what location they are in. So that's so, the yeah. like N1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. Yeah, 5, w6 w6 for mm -hmm. yep. exterior. Okay. Yep. So, but to locate the Vastu chakra first, what I do is I make a square around the, the perimeter of the house. Now, there is some void space here, which is fine. That's not an issue. Um, and I know there's a little space out here, which extends out. I wouldn't include that because it's just, it's, if it was more habitable space, I would wanna include it. Like let's say you had a whole big addition over here, then my rectangle would be larger because I would want to include that space as well. But these little zones aren't an issue. So I make my rectangle and then I make a cross to find the center point. And that's where I center my Vastu chakra. Now to find the north orientation, I, very modern approach, <laughs> I go to Google Earth and I type in the address, get the coordinates. Of course, I put the, this floor plan into AutoCAD and then I, you know, pivot the, the house depending on which way is true north. And so that's how I get the Vastu Chakra to lay on top of it, to lay on top of the floor plan. Yeah. And then from an ar architect's question, yes. do you then draft at that angle or do you keep it at 90 degree angles for drafting? I would move it. I did not, I did not pivot it for, for this. Um, now that I look at it, I would, I would make it a 90 degree angle. Yeah, that's I'm just <laughs> I, like, that's I mean, that's like making sure it's weird angles. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. That is a very good point. Um, no, I would have, if if I had started working on it, I would have pivoted. I had just dropped in the Vastu Chakra because I wasn't touching anything and I started doing my analysis, but it is yeah. a good question. Um, no, yeah, you can then shift everything. And so then your Vastu Chakra would also then pivot whichever way. So mm -hmm. um, the one thing is, is because your garage, also one thing why I didn't touch that is, it doesn't have a connection from the interior of the house. There's not like a hallway, right? So if this was a hallway, yeah. I would then include the garage in my whole rectangle. But because the garage isn't attached, you know, by like a interior condition, condition space, we've got architects listening, I can use that vocabulary, I'm sure. So you have condition space connecting the two, then we'll look at it. So really for the garage, I would then end up dropping another Vastu Chakra into this 
onto this to double check, you know, where those entrances are, which I didn't end up doing for the space. I wanted to look more at the house, but that's how you would look at the the garage. So that's kind gotcha. of the difference as far as the house goes. Before I go into the house too, I also want to talk about the site. The, the site, as far as in Bostu, you're looking only at the property and things that we want to keep in mind is in the in the north so like this area of the north and the east areas of the property we want them to be low with low landscaping we don't want high hills because this is where the energy kind of comes through it go, comes in from the north and the east that's where this like the positive energy comes in right you get that positive morning light from the east that's all coming in from those zones so you want to keep this kind of low you don't want to have heavy big retaining walls or structures so like ideally your garage would have been better over here near the south west south you know and south and west areas this section because in your west and south sections of the home or of the site that's where you want you know big walls heavy things storage it's where you would keep like heavy equipment for example so that's one thing just to keep in mind about the site gotcha so then looking at your, let's see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So that's kind of the floor plan. Let's look at your entrances. So your front entrance here is in the SW and S5 zone. And I have not memorized 32 <laughs> entrances yet, so I'm going to look through my notes. So one thing is that, so because it's in both zones, and it's pretty much equally in both zones, we can look at the both zones. Like for example, your rear door is, let me bring it up a little bit. Which I will is say that rear door perfect. was hard to model because it is actually two different doors swinging in two different directions. Wow. <laughs> and that wouldn't, so that interesting. And that wouldn't have, oh, because you, you have like a screen door. Like it's like a screen door. door and it swings one direction, then the outside mm -hmm. door swings the other. And so now my dog just doesn't understand hinges and doors. <laughs> Of course not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Poor thing. So that and so it doesn't matter again, like I mentioned, it doesn't matter which way the door swings. Um because most of this door is in the N4 zone, that's what we would look at. But going back to your front entry, so the S4 zone has to do um with at least having a door there has to do with um high increase of um if you were to, if you were trying to get pregnant, or if you have children in the future, you're more likely to have a male. This also means that you are going to have um, more of a productive output, so you're going to be um, producing a lot more work because you're going through this entrance. And then S5 has to do with it can lead to like death and kind of having a blocked mind when it comes to um, getting money. So those are kind of the two zones. So what does that mean? That means if if you which door do you do you enter the house more? Do you use it through the back door or the front door? So I think for me, when I come and go, um, for anybody who doesn't know my house because you haven't seen the floor plans, I have a basement and an upstairs. And when I come and go, I'm typically actually leaving through the garage, which is probably more in the S7 section if we took yeah. this Bostu Street down. But I have a back alley. And so I have roads on both sides of my house. And so my family and most of our friends and guests and my husband, because my husband parks in the back garage, comes mm -hmm. in through the back door. So for the most part, our front door is more of the spare extra door when we've got a lot of people coming over to park on both sides or yeah. packages so yeah well so that's good because one of the things <laughs> is like, which it so it, you you because you use that entrance less if you were concerned about having to deal with you know that s um five zone which has to deal with like death because you don't use this door very often you're not bring that energy you're not walking through that energy you're not bringing that energy in and four which is a very good zone which has to do with abundance where you're going to it can lead to abundance and especially inheritance so the fact that you your husband walks through this door is good um, i'll just get all my inheritance from him <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go 
so you'll get your inheritance from him. Um, so that's good. Then looking at, let's look at S7 and S6. We, this is the one floor plan that didn't end up plotting. Um, so S6 leads to actually um, like intense poverty. And, <laughs> and S7 has to do with like leads to wastage of effort. And it means like you're not getting really any results. So I should park my car and then leave the garage, walk around the back and come in the back door. Yes. There, that's one remedy. There's multiple remedies. But if you're not noticing that you're you're feeling like you're wasting your efforts, which and, and I know you're you are hustling and working really hard. If you're not noticing that, I don't think that's an issue because there's different things that can balance that space. Because mm -hmm. you walk up the stairs, which we can cover, um, since the stairs pretty much are down below. And so I know your garage is here and then you walk yeah. up the stairs up. What's good about that is in Vastu, when it comes to stairs, we look at the first step and what zone is it in. So yours is in the south southeast area of the home, which has to do with power and confidence. And it's also in the south zone, which has to do with fame, recognition and relaxation. And so because you walk up the steps um, in both of these zones, and it's mostly, I'm going to say it's mostly in the south zone. Let's kind of look back. It's mostly in the south zone, which is good, because that means when you walk up the stairs and into the, oh, is this the, up, oh, this is the, yeah. This it's is like the, the basement floor. stairs are really steep. Oh. And so oh, then those are the here. long stairs to the right. second floor. But Oh, that's right. Okay, I see now. That's right. So because you walk in both directions in the south, that's fine. Um, if sometimes it's like a stair is in a different location, um, then it's only good if you walk up the stairs and then go right or walk up the stairs and then go left, like clockwise or counterclockwise. But mm -hmm. being in the south, in the steps, this staircase, um, you can go both directions and it works fine with the energy and it really taps into that theme, the recognition, that energy. So there's now, what would you, awesome. What would you do if somebody is a fully remote employee? So they don't, they, you know, still have to leave the house to go mm -hmm. like do fun things. But mm -hmm. most of the time when I leave the house, it's to go to work. And if I don't go mm -hmm. to work, I'm kind of just around. And if I work mm -hmm. from home that day, so are the exterior entrances different if you're not leaving as regular as like going in the office all the time? I don't know if you've hit that it's yet. It, for the entrances, it depends how often you use them. Um, so it's like, if you like this front entry, I wouldn't look at remedying this because- Because mm -hmm. we don't use it. We don't use it. Um, if you were noticing you were having issues with debt or you were wasting your efforts and you're like, I'm not getting anywhere with anything, then we would look at how can we fix this. Um, if that's an entrance you have to use. Like one thing, for example, is kind of going back to the, the services I offer is, you know, we don't have to really, we don't have to remodel your entire house to benefit from Vastu because for example, I'm a renter. I can't even paint my wall different colors. So I have to think on different ways on how can I remedy this? How can I fix this area without even, you know, touching a paintbrush to the walls, for example. So there's there's ways we can kind of look at it. Um, but if you're feeling, if you were feeling ish, there were issues with that, we would look at this, um, this garage door. But because it's good you bring up that you're a remote worker, let's look at your upper floor plan and the space that you work in. Because I wanted to talk to you about that where I found it interesting. So this is your office space, correct? Yep, office space. Office space. Okay, <laughs> so your office space, I don't know exactly where you sit, but it's in the east southeast area of the home, right? Would you, do you sit up, up at the top desk or the bottom desk? Uh, the bottom. Desk? Bottom. Okay, so you're probably like right about here. Yep. So the east southeast area of the home actually has to do with anxiety. And so I was going to ask you if you've noticed if you're feeling very anxious because you spend a lot of time here. You also are kind of sitting in the southeast area of the home, which has to do with cash flow. So there is abundance in this zone. 
but if you were spending a lot more time kind of over by the window that and you're feeling are you feeling anxious when you work here um i know i hit a time period where i just don't want to be in this room anymore mm -hmm. like if you've if i've got a really long day if i had to start early and had a big deadline or on a bunch of calls all day then I just want to be out of this room. So when I work in the evening on Mentor Dino, mm -hmm. a lot of the times I want to take my laptop out if I don't need a second monitor and go downstairs to the mm -hmm. north living room, which would be more in like the N7 and 8 spot. Mm -hmm. So everything here. So N7 and eight, you're working here. And then, yeah, so that makes sense. Because northeast, this area of the home has to do with mind and clarity. And then this is the north northeast, which has to do with health and immunity. So it would make sense that you're gravitating towards this area of the home as well. Yeah. So, but generally, like, feel fine. But it's more of those longer days, or when you've mm -hmm. had a long week. Um, mm -hmm. As architects, you know, whenever we hit our deadlines and we're in the same room and we need like all of our screens to be able to mm -hmm. plow through stuff. Um, right. Yeah. That's so yeah, so and so what's interesting is hearing about that your husband works in this space. He's got it made. <laughs> and his desk is to the north. To the north. Okay. So he's in kind of the west, southwest area, which has to do with savings and education. So that's very good. Ideally, if you guys could switch spots and you sit here, that could be good. Especially the education know. side, because Mentor Dino is all about yeah. educating. Exactly. And then the southwest area of the home has to do with skills and relationships. If you were learning a musical instrument, this would be a good area to be practicing it, for example, because you're trying to better that, that skill. Um, but ideally, if you guys switched, that would be better. But I know that going back to my relationship with my husband, there's certain certain battles you can win certain battles you kind of have to let go <laughs> on what I can on the changes I can make within our unit so I, but that would be my recommendation if you are noticing a lot of issues and maybe you know if he's not in his office go try sitting there see yeah. if you can do anything and um give it a try you know it's not going to be like after one time but it, it'll make sense that you would be it would be better if you were over in this area yeah just invade yeah. <laughs> like, i didn't do anything there's the energy like i feel like this energy this zone is better for you so <laughs> you can have him talk to me and i'll tell him this is this is better but um so that's so those are some things um one thing i did want to that i kind of saw that was a little bit of an issue and i have this in my apartment which is um something i want to cover is the center point which is very important in Vastu because it's called the Bromstan. And it's the center, it's where all the energies emerge in the home. And you want this space to be as clear as possible. So no load bearing walls, no storage, and especially no toilets. We have a <laughs> and the center is pretty much <laughs> right on the toilet. <laughs> it is. And I have this condition in my home. We have a powder room on our lower level, and it's right in the center of the of the um the Bromstan. And so the things so what you can do with that is, well, what, what, one thing, if you, have you noticed any, having a toilet in this, in the Brumstan can lead to financial loss and also issues with your digestion. So I know those are personal questions, but you don't have to answer. If you feel like you're having any financial issues or you feel like you're having digestive issues, um, I would refrain from using this toilet as often as possible. What you can do is just close the lid, and just leave it. You can wrap it in fabric if you if you'd like. Um, we I just don't use that toilet for me. I just don't use that. My husband uses the toilet. That's his um, prerogative. I stopped using that toilet when I found that out that it could mean that there's financial loss and health issues. Um, so I would recommend using more of the upstairs toilet, which is kind of close to the Brumstan, but you're still good. Um, this toilet and looking at toilets in Vostu as well. When we look at the the bathroom. We don't look at the shower location, the sink location. We look at where the toilet is located because the toilet signifies disposable disposal of energy, including washing machines are similarly. Um, 
So the toilet is flushing away whatever that is. So your toilet upstairs is mostly in the north, northwest, northwest zone. So the north, northwest zone has to do with um, attraction and like sexuality. So this would have to do with if you were, for example, like a movie star or a model and your career really depended on like your attraction, we would want to make sure this zone is really good, right? Because right now, like your sexual, or if you were trying to conceive, for example, um, this would kind of be an issue we would look at. And then the Northwest has to do with banking and support. So that means you're flushing your money away. So these aren't ideal areas to have the toilet. Um, I would actually recommend remodel if you could, if you want if a more intensive remodel would be you have the west northwest area of the home, which has to do with um, depression and anxiety, I would move the toilet to this area of the house of the zone. For example, so pretty much if you mirrored it, like put the sink yeah. and toilet on the other side, had the door to the north. Yeah, yeah, that would actually be yes, yeah, exactly. If you mirrored it, then that would that would work. I mean, you're still close to the Bromstown, but you're in a better zone. Yeah. It's yeah. the West Northwest. Interesting. I'm just fascinated. I just like all these like little intricacies of things. It's very interesting and it's it's hard not to get like rabbit hole because I've been so since I've so that was a big shift once I moved into my home full time to work. So this is our guest bedroom and I'm just going to quickly say, someone is beating on drums. Can you hear that? No. Okay, good. Okay, good. Someone's like practicing their drums. I don't know where. Anyway. <laughs> um, sorry, I have to edit that out. But um, so when I moved into my my space and I, this guest room, first it was my, first it was the guest room. We had a bed in here. And then we, I had my desk. This is where I studied for my ARE exam. Now it became my office. So I have, you know, not all at once, but one by one, I've been moving things in this room to kind of help flow with not only my productive energy, making sure I stay productive and things are located where they make sense, but also using Bostu principles to kind of help decorate the space. So like I have a money tree plant um, that wasn't doing so well downstairs. And I thought, well, it'd be perfect. Like I want some new opportunity, some new growth in my company. What if I bring it upstairs and my money tree is actually in my north area of my home which has to do with like money and opportunity and since moving it up here i've signed up two projects so i'm feeling that energy and i'm you know but i'm doing it also i like to do it with good intention like not forcing anything and if something just doesn't feel right don't force it you know there could just be another reason why that space isn't doing you know isn't feeling right exactly now you mentioned if you don't want to knock down walls, there's opportunities mm -hmm. with color. Yes. Does it change in the directions based on the colors you put? Or Yes. So the colors, I was actually looking at your kitchen um, and looking at a remedy. So the colors kind of have to do with the element, um, the element theory. So let me look at that first. So the element theory, let me make sure I can my notes correct on this. So there's the five elements. And we'll start with water. So water goes from the north northwest area of the home all the way to the northeast. So that's your water element. And then from east northeast all the way to east southeast is your air. And then your fire element, just back up a little bit. There you go. Your fire element has to do with south, southwest, southeast, south, southeast. Yep. Nope. Too far. This is your fire. And then earth. And then this is your space element. Previously, what I've been studying, in, so when I was studying traditional Vastu, the there were four quadrants, just like northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, and it was water, 
fire, earth, air. But now that I've delved deeper into Bob Stew, things have kind of shifted because now you see that there's air here and space over here. And space can also be air. So that's kind of where those energies start to kind of change and shift a little bit, depending on what boss you're, you're learning from in your study. But so that has to do with the elements. Going back to color is why I was looking at color for your floor plan is I was looking at the kitchen. And it's great that you cook facing east, which is really good, actually, um, looking out the window. But it's not as good as have it's not good to have like your stove here um, because you're you're in that air element right the air element we were saying goes from east northeast to here and so you're in the air element so having a fire element here you may want to balance that zone so if you're east let me go back so east has to do with social association so if you were someone who's heavily in politics, we'd want to balance the zone. But also by having a fire element in this zone, I wanted to bring in some air element properties. And what that could mean is bringing in colors like green and brown to balance that space, um, to bring those colors kind of into the space to help with offset that fire element from the stove. Because that's, you know, that also in Boston, when you think about like the fire element, compared to a house, like, so you look at your digestive system, which has to do with, like, your fire, the fire element, fire energy. In the home, the fire is represented through the stove, through the furnace, um, you know, that fire quality. So that's why we really, we would want you cooking more in, like, the southeast area of the home. Um, even in the east-southeast area of the home would be better which has to do with um, anxiety, because this having your range here um, would help balance that space. But what you could do is you could, then you could invite colors of like green and brown into that space to help balance it if you can't move your range. Does that make sense? Yeah. It actually was green when I bought it and then I painted it like a blue color. <laughs> so maybe they knew Vastu. <laughs> possibly, yeah, possibly. But like your dining room, that's that's a good area, like you're in that fire element, right? Which has to do with like your digestion. And because you're eating, if you were working in this space, it could also actually be good to work here, but you know, you'd actually really more want to eat in this dining room. You don't want to work at your dining room table. You really want to focus your eating there more. Yeah. No, I'm never down that way besides eating or being a stockpile of stuff on our dining room table. Well, that's good because you want to have heavy stuff, right, in the south and the west, like these, this area, or that's too big, like this area of the home, you want to keep with heavy stuff. And you kind of also, you don't, it's great that you have some, you have a lot of windows coming in because that energy, that positive energy, when I was talking back about the site and keeping things low, um, having like low, lightweight, you know, furniture as well here will help kind of balance the home. And if you had heavier furniture, if you had like, you know, whatever, like a big box full of things or like a, like a, like a chest full of things, like a treasure chest kind of thing that you stored stuff, like if this is used for storage, that's good. We have a giant section on there that's pretty much the size of the room. So I always joke that's it's the couch that's room. The couch is the room, the room is the couch. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I feel like these but, closets would be better over here. Down there. Down there, if you had to. But they're still fine because they are, they're your, they're not allowing that harsh afternoon sunlight because, you know, the rays ones kind of have to do with, like, you know, why you want to make sure you put extra sunscreen on in the evening because those, those gamma, gamma rays, I think, that come in from the sun in the afternoon are harsher than the morning sun that comes in, right? Um, mm -hmm. So you don't want that harsh energy to come in and you don't want that energy to come out as well. If let's say your whole wall here had a bunch of openings, that energy would start to flow out and we want to capture it and let that energy stay in the house. So it'd be good if it's good that you'd want solid walls here. Yeah, and from an architect's perspective, mm -hmm. the south is really the solar heat gain side as well. Yeah. 
and you get more natural light going from the north side. So I know if it's really cold and my dog's cold, I'll open the front door and just let him soak up the sun like a lizard. But besides that, we generally keep it closed just to try to control the temperature of the house while leaving the north as open as possible. Yeah. So what else do you dive into with Vastu or what questions? This has been fascinating. I'm just like, I just want to dive into like all the quadrants and overanalyze it, but. <laughs> no, there's a lot that I look at. So mostly like what I just did is kind of like an overview of what I would offer. And what I would look at is you send me your floor plan. And of course the question is like, well, what if I don't have a floor plan? You know, then we can figure something out, even just a rough sketch. The more accurate it is, the more accurate the floor plan is, the more accurate the Vostu, the, the Vostu analysis will be. Um, so, but there's definitely ways around it. We can figure something out, but it would be looking at the entrances. It would be looking at where the areas are asking, you know, are you noticing things in your life? Like, you know, are you feeling, you know, roadblocks in your finances? Let's look at those zones that I know I've already mentioned some of them now that what's not why isn't that area balanced? You know, is there something wrong? You know, maybe you have a toilet in all of your, you know, locations that you're like, oh my gosh, every location that I have a toilet in has to do with money. If so, I'm just washing all my money. Yes, you are, but then let's find some remedies on how we can balance that and, you know, maybe look at different zones, things like that. Yeah. And you said the center point, you always want to try to keep more open. Yes, as open as possible. Um, one thing too is, and an easy thing you can do in Vastu um, as well, which is which is huge, and you don't even have to consult with me, is reducing clutter is huge in Vastu. So keeping spaces clean of of just stuff also helps the energy flow through. So if you're looking, maybe that could be a reason why some of the energy is stuck in that zone. Is you know you've got mm -hmm. just a pile of crap there, so you know, you clean that out and that energy is able to move. So kind of just ideas there too, is just reducing clutter, especially in the center, in the Bromstown. Like we have um, in my apartment, you know, the center of the apartment, we have the the flue for the fireplace. Okay, I can't move that, but I can keep that area because then we have like a linen closet next to it and some like, um, and like a um, little cabinet. So I try to keep that clear of dust, clear of anything, and I try to keep that area nice light, and I, I don't keep heavy things, you know, it's linen closets, so I keep our towels there, I keep things like that, I don't want to, you know, burden that area, because that's where the energies emerge from the home. And then on the lower level, we have a toilet, so I just don't use that toilet. Yeah, no, but I definitely know, like, my husband and I are... I would say we like things neat, but then I'll like let things go crazy and then ignore mm -hmm. it for a while. Like, you know, as soon as you have a deadline or like going through the Aries, like mm -hmm. my house would be a mess the two weeks leading to an exam. And then after the exam, it's like, go get a drink. And then I clean the house and I would feel so much better. And when I took the exams, there was a week where I didn't know if I passed or failed. So it was like the blissfully unaware, but you can't do anything about it. But okay. no, that is... It's just fascinating, but it makes sense, like that bathroom on the main floor, like we entertain a lot. And so mm -hmm. kind of that galley kitchen and kind of compartmentalizing all these spaces is a little bit harder for us to have the mm -hmm. whole extended family or all of our friends over. And I always want to just like blow out that bathroom and make it like one big open kitchen to living. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. When you said like, oh, you really don't want that there and you want open space. Mm -hmm. like, well, maybe that's why I just want to demo the bathroom. Nope, it, it makes sense. It makes sense that you want that that big open space. So, I would, with my permission, yeah, I would sign off on that for you. <laughs> Highly recommended. If you need to, if you need to pass that design to your husband, I will sign off on your proposal to move that move that toilet. Yeah, we'll see how bad the economy stays. Yeah. To, if we have to go, well, I would love to build my own house. So if mm -hmm. we move, it's like okay, I'm building. Yeah. Um, but I got locked in in 2017, so interest rates were super low at the time compared yeah. to now. So it's it's like, oh, well, if we do some big demo work to make it work for us, we love the area. So yeah. there's one thing I wanted to touch on really briefly because you mentioned you have a lot of guests at home coming yeah. into like 
and I'm sure the guests use that bathroom. So one thing to keep in mind in Vastu is you wouldn't, the guests wouldn't feel affected by like using that bathroom. They wouldn't, they personally wouldn't deal with financial losses or digestion because they're only temporarily using the space. It's once you permanently start using the space. And that's also one of the reasons I asked, like, okay, so when did you buy? When did you, you own? And do you plan mm -hmm. on staying here? Because then we can look at temporary fixes or if we need to look at permanent, like you're like, this is the house I'm going to die in. Well, then we should look at permanent fixes so that you don't have to, you know, there's just, there's then more layers to what we can do to fix rather than just, you know, something easy, temporary to just fix the situation. Yeah. Now, from an architect's perspective, have you ever gone through and tried to make, like, the ideal Vastu home? I have. Well, for the one project I, I've worked on, I'm working on in Canada, I'm, I'm trying to, yes. Because from, and there, it's a rural, rural property, so we, there's no, like, setbacks. Mm -hmm. to deal with the zoning re regulations at the point at this moment so um it's kind of whatever you know you want and so with that i you know i met with the clients i talked to them i you know got to know what you know what are they looking for and kind of design that home um but once it's built and they move in that'll be interesting to see so what does happen what kind of how are the energies are we going to have to because you also kind of once you start moving and using the space and you may not use the space as you initially intended you know maybe all of a sudden you find yourself working at the dining table rather than at this you know cute little kitchen that you built because you're like well i actually like the light here better well so you know there's definitely different things that you can look at once the people move in and then start using the space and then you know give it a few months and that's that's what i'm curious to see is okay i i feel like i've designed a home that's pretty ideal like there's a few you know and there were a few things of course you had to you know make a few things that like modifications if there's like a hierarchy what's more important to them you know like hey yeah. it doesn't make sense like one thing is it doesn't make sense is you know, I tried to locate the bathrooms near each other for ease of plumbing construction, right? I have also, one thing that helps is having Vastu, having me be a licensed architect practicing Vastu is I also look at it from a practical standpoint is how are you, it goes back to, you know, how are you going to construct this? So if all the bathrooms are all kind of weird and once you start building the home and you've got plumbing lines and HVAC lines everywhere and it's just a hot mess and it's going to cost a lot more because everything's going to be, you know, connected differently. Um, so that's something like we had to make a few kind of like contingencies like, okay, well, you know, how are we going to, you know, what, because it's a domino effect. If you move something, something else gets affected. So yeah, um, there's definitely ways to approach it, but. So yeah, but there is, and I would love to build my own home, of course, um, <laughs> and Vasti principles as well. So that's also a dream. Um, but for first the time design being, build operation. Yes, <laughs> yeah, Vasti <laughs> design build operation, and then yeah, use that as like the and that would be a great portfolio piece. So that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, this was absolutely fascinating. Um, I I love ending all of my shows. Since I focus on career transitions and a lot for young professionals, I like to end, do you have any advice for young professionals starting their career or somebody looking to start their own firm since you started your own firm this year? So anyone, I'll, I'll answer the first question. Anyone starting the career, know that you are going into a career that has endless possibilities. And if there's something you're noticing that you aren't resonating with, um, and especially if you're in architecture school and you're like, I'm not really good at something, you know, at this part of whatever you're studying, know that there, the umbrella of architecture is so wide that if you still love architecture, but you're maybe not finding what it is that is like resonating with you or what you're, you know, you're kind of passionate about your dharma, right? Your soul's purpose is kind of calling you towards, keep exploring because you're going to find something. I have classmates who went through architecture schools and, you know, were like, ah, I don't know if I'm going to be designing homes and they're working in custom animation or they have their you know, design companies or they're working in, there's so much you can do in architecture. You don't have to just be designing buildings. Um, so don't get discouraged. For someone who's starting out their own firm, I would say my advice is have, first have a deep and honest, like, 
like <laughs> session one-on-one -on -one session with yourself and ask yourself if this is for sure something that you want to do because it is very scary obviously coming you're not getting that paycheck every two weeks you know everything falls on you there's there's like the high highs like you mentioned and low lows um have that honest conversation with yourself if you know for a hundred like for fact like me i knew like I knew for a fact, once I graduate, I'm going to work for a little bit, get my license and become a, my own business owner. I already knew that. I was like, there's nothing standing in my way. And now I feel like I finally made it to this goal that I have been working towards since I you know, was drawing sketches in like fifth, sixth grade of a guy in his house. So I would definitely say, though, think about, you know, have that conversation with yourself. Like, OK, is this something I really want? And then it's very important to have a support network. I think especially unless you are sitting on a nest egg of just, you know, have that conversation with your partner, with your spouse, talk to them about it. And then if it's comfortable, if you're able to have that conversation with your boss as well, um, that would be like, I would say wait on that maybe because you're going to have to make that transition and moonlighting, you know, some companies don't allow moonlighting. They want you to be solely focused on your firm. So again, like I said back earlier in the episode, being honest and transparent, I think is huge. So if it's something you're thinking about, talk to someone in your office, maybe it's your boss to be like, hey, I'm thinking about this because it's not going to happen overnight. For me, I incorporated in February, I you know, fully went on my own in June. And like now at the end of the year, you know, 10 months later, I finally feel like, okay, now I'm working, I have a schedule, I have a routine like there's, and I know how my billing is going to go, I know my proposals, I've got all the templates and everything um, set, but it's not going to happen overnight. So start with the conversations and then slowly build, work on your design, your logo, then find out what business structure you want, get all that done and, and, and take your time and have fun with it. That's one thing my husband told me every time, he's like, because I'd stress out about something, he's just like, make sure you have fun with it, because you're probably only going to do this once. Like, I don't know if I'm ever going to build up a whole other company because I just want it to be, to be my company. So he's like, make sure you have fun with it as well. And that goes back to the first question too. If someone's in architecture, what's your advice? Have fun in architecture school too. Just have fun. This yeah. is such a fun, creative field that you're in. Um, don't take it so seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> definitely advice I wish I could give myself going back to college. Be like, don't worry about it it'll be fine. You don't need to pull all nighters. You don't need to do all this. Like just have fun. Yeah. And it'll be fine. All right. But thank you so much, Katerina. How can people find you if, um, they want to hire you as their architect, they loved our Vastu conversation, or if they're looking for some advice or just hang out with you. So you can definitely hang out with me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active at from the honeycomb podcast. And you can listen to me. I have weekly episodes every Friday on from the Honeycomb podcast. And we're there. I'll talk about boss do. I have some incredible guests like you, Caitlin. I love talking with other like-minded women. So definitely it's not just the field of architecture, but also um, just kind of talking about wellness, spirituality, astrology, whatever I find interesting. I'm very curious about a lot of things. So I kind of use that as a platform to learn more. Um, and then I'll, I'll, have there'll be I'll make sure there's a link to my website especially specifically to the Vostu services um, where you can then reach out to me I offer a free 15 minute consultation that way we can kind of give any questions you're like or oh, I don't have a floor plan or you know this is what I'm thinking I want to talk to you before we you know jump into you know a, a consultation together because I want to make sure you're comfortable and that you're going to get the best out of it you know that you can and then I can and I can provide that service for you. Yeah, and I'll leave all the links below for what we talked about today and being able to catch you in all the different platforms that you're doing. But thank you so much, Katerina, for talking to me today. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed our discussion today. Check out the description below for any resources, links, and contact information we discussed. Did you like the conversation today? Is there something you'd like to know more about or a topic I should cover? Leave me a comment below and I will see what I can do to best answer your questions. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It does really help others be able to find this resource to have larger conversations. 
So leave me a comment and subscribe. I really appreciate your support.